Hi there. This is Genevieve with Faith Art Journaling, giving you some tips about how to get started with your journaling and coloring tools. Now, your first area of concern is your work area. This is a wood table underneath, and I definitely don't want to be painting and marking up on it. So I have this craft mat here, and please note that there's different types of craft mats. This one is wonderful for paints, marking. It comes off real easily, as you can see there. However, if I'm going to be cutting on this, like with an X-Acto knife, it'll definitely go through. So you need to be aware of that if you start cutting on your surface with different cutters and X-Acto knives. You would need a glass mat or a cutting mat. This is just a work area protective craft mat. So we have the first item. The next item will be the mixed media paper or journals. Now, there's paper that comes in different types of quality and some are for working with wet materials and some are not. This is a very flimsy one and you can see, you can see right through it. And when you mark, especially if you mark with something like a Sharpie or a thicker alcohol, you'll notice how easily it goes through to the next layer. However, when you work with something thicker, like a craft um, type of material paper, like mixed media, you'll notice as you do write on it, it doesn't go through and it's a lot more durable when you work with watercolor and things of that nature. Now you have two choices. You can actually create your own book or work with sheets of mixed media paper, such as this big tablet, and you can cut them down to size and make it uh, your own booklet or just work on sheets individually if you choose to, or cut them to size to put in a three ring binder, whatever you would like. Or you can do what I prefer, which is to work in a journal that's binded, because that way I can always keep and look back and reflect on my different entries. Uh, the good thing about working in one of these journals is you can always look back on it, and I suggest that you open it up to work on the single page you'll be working on so it'll be flush with your surface. And that way you don't have to worry about bleeding onto the next page or uh, getting anything bumpy. Because as you can see, as soon as you one page touches the other, there'll be different markings and things of that nature if you don't protect it. Or you can also skip a page to leave a blank page in between. But there's different types of mixed media journals such as this one. Here's another one same quality of paper and same concept and then they have them actually a lot larger which is a lot of fun and sometimes when there's one of those wonderful sales like a buy one get one half off i'll take advantage and get one of these larger ones just to have some extra space and enjoyment once you get them you can either start or finish with decorating the cover to just personalize it and make it a little extra special for yourself and you can actually leave it out on a dinner table a coffee table a side table for conversations with other people to share it's a wonderful way of sharing god's word with other people and uh, you leave it laying around it's easy to grab and share with others and that's what the idea is about sharing god's word so once you have your craft mat your mixed media paper or journal once again, there's no right and no wrong with this. It's what works for you. Your next item is you need a good pencil. Uh, this happens to be one of my favorite pencils, the Ticonderoga, Roga, and a good eraser is also very important. I like this pencil because it erases pretty well. And uh, the only thing is you will need a sharpener with this one. They do have mechanical pencils. That way you don't have to worry about a sharpener. But I tend to write really hard a lot of times, and I like to be able to control that. So once again, there's no right and no wrong. These are just some suggested items for your list. So we've got down pencil and eraser. Sometimes you wanna add something to your journal page and if you do, you're gonna need some scissors. So there's a lot of different types of scissors. I have my little fussy cut scissors that I keep in a protective cover because I use this for thin ribbon and, and things that I wanna be very careful with detail. And if you notice up closely, you can see it has a very fine tip and this is easy to control. So these are kind of my special scissors that I leave locked up. There's always scissors that you have lying around the house that you can get at Office Depot, um, Walmart, Target, anything of that nature. There's regular paper cutting scissors and there's craft scissors, which, is a, which are a lot stronger and thicker for thicker materials, such as thicker cardstock or chipboard and things of that nature. So depending on what you do will be what scissor you will need to utilize. So you may want a couple as you get further involved, but to start, any scissor will do. Next, coloring pencils, because once you draw something pretty, you wanna add some color. There's different types of coloring pencils. There's basic coloring pencils like Crayola or like this kit that I um, bought 
uh, someplace randomly that I ran into and they're just regular coloring pencils. However, there are watercolor pencils such as these out that once you use these watercolor pencils on a paper, you can use a paintbrush to activate it and it'll be like watercoloring. There's also watercolor actual markers as well with the same type of tip. So have fun with your, your colors, be it regular uh, coloring pencils, watercolor pencils, and they come in small packs. They come in large packs such as this one, but the idea is to enjoy it and to have fun. So after you've got some coloring pencils, you may want some boldness on your paper. And in order to do that, markers are great. And markers can be very simple such as this set that I have here that I found randomly somewhere, or they can be as extravagant as this uh, Letra set, uh, set that I have. But my favorite by far, I have to say, honestly, are Sharpies. I've, I take advantage of every sale of Sharpies and get the fine tips and then the thicker ones because with markers, you're gonna want two types. You're gonna want uh, something to maybe color in a bit, but you need something skinny for journaling, such as this one. Look how fine tip this tip is. So if I'm going to write, look how thin it is. However, if I wanna outline something, I want something a little more bold, look how bold this tip is. And it really makes things pop when you accentuate it with an outline. So markers are definitely a great idea for your toolbox of Faith Art Journaling. Now we also, I would like to remind you that there's different types of watercolor. Besides a watercolor pencil, you can actually use watercolor sets, such as this one. This is a little travel one that I'm in just so in love with because you can mix colors easier easy and it comes with this little uh, brush that you assemble to utilize and it's just great to travel with and then there's the basic palette that's always a winner that uh, I know that you all probably remember from school at some point in time and they're very easy to find and once you get the pencils or markers and you get a little collection you may want to find a little pencil box to hold them in a pencil case something of that nature Next, we're gonna need clear glue because once you cut something, and uh, by the way, if you don't have scissors, there's always the tools that God gave us. I love to use my fingers and my hands for smudging, painting, tearing, and cutting. You can always have that as an option. We're gonna need some glue to adhere whatever it is that we do on the page. There's lots of different types of glue. This is one of my favorite because it has a thick tip on one side and then it has the thinner tip on the other side in case you're gonna do something thin with glitter or a ribbon or something of that nature. There's pen glues available. There's tape runners that have become very popular. And also there's just the basic simple double-sided tape, which works fantastic. So once again, you can be as simple or as complicated as you like, depending on your budget and what's accessible to you. And besides that, any other related art supply that you feel comfortable utilizing, and that will be anything and everything that you can get your hands on. If you wanna do some painting, you could always use a sponge, you can use a kitchen sponge or an artist sponge. There's different sponge brushes, regular brushes that come in kits or that you can find very affordably if you look around. And then there's also ink pads that are wonderful to play with and these daubers. And once again, you can use a wipey to use with the ink. You can use the ink palette itself to rub on the paper. And uh, how about chalks? Let's not forget chalks. Chalks are a wonderful medium to use to look, uh, make items look distressing and just add some extra color. And they have some wonderful pastels. There's shimmers, there's glitters. The world is really your playground with all of this. So I encourage you to Create a list and little by little accumulate and see what you feel comfortable with and have fun and praise God with all that you do. I look forward to seeing you soon. Enjoy.